Hi, welcome to lesson four in our pop saxophone series. Today we're looking at probably the most famous saxophone solo of the last 30 years. Indeed, I'd hazard a guess that some of my friends under about the age of 25, 26, um, maybe even a little bit older, have a deep uh, biological attachment to this song, um, but we won't go into that just now. What I want to talk about today is the solo. And um, the solo was recorded by a guy called Steve Gregory, who's a session musician in London. Uh, and Steve's still around. I, I played a few gigs with him and I actually took a few lessons with Steve trying to get my pop chops together. Um, Steve told me the story about this and you can read about it in more detail on my blog. But the key thing to remember here is that Steve didn't record it in the key that you hear it in. Here is the released recording, probably the radio edit. Now, there's lots of debate, or I used to have it in my, particularly my teens when I was looking at this solo, thinking, that's not on tenor, that's on alto. It's definitely on alto. But every time you saw a recording of it on MTV, the sax player was always playing tenor. And so you're thinking, well, it doesn't sound like a tenor. But Steve managed to answer this question for me because Steve was the 11th guy to actually play the solo. There was guys in New York, LA and London who had played it before Steve. But Steve realised he couldn't get this glissando nailed down without an F sharp key. And he didn't have one on his Mark VI. Like mine, the F sharp key just isn't there. So what Steve opted to do was to drop it down a semitone. He asked him to slow the tape down so that the tape was running at a semitone lower. Okay, of course, there was no digital recording back then. And so Steve, rather than recording it in the E minor that's written, records it in D sharp minor, which is quite a lot trickier to play the, the rest of it. But if you're a good musician, it shouldn't be too hard. And so he could nail down, because um, if you try and play it on, on tenor without an F sharp... <laughs> It's really difficult to get those extra notes in, whereas if you drop it in the semitone, you've got the run up to top F, or top E sharp as it's written. Okay, and so it sounds. So actually the way it sounded and the way it was recorded is like this. So, And I remember I'm only using Virtual DJ, which is a free piece of software. Yes, we're digital now, 30 years down the line. Things have really improved technology. Uh, in the technology, but it still won't be as clean as they probably heard it in the studio that day. Probably that spin. Actually, I'm going to just put it back to normal pitch. The thing is, of course, because the tape was slowed down, the recording would slow down. Virtual DJ is amazing because it allows us to slow things down and maintain the pitch. And I've just adjusted the key wheel. But to me, that sounds like a tenor. It's gutsier, it's got those lower harmonics. No mistaking, that's a tenor. Whereas, lock it up a bit. Sounds like an alto, maybe? But of course it's not. It's a tenor sped up. And I think, and Steve agrees with me when I was talking about this, because it was the 80s and sounds were artificial, that he got selected as the guy on the solo because when they sped the tape back up, George Michael had not heard him play it down a semitone. He only heard it once it had been sped up and he was like, oh, that's that's what I want, that's what I want. It's different. It's That's the guy's solo. And, you know, Steve went on to earn a lot of money from royalties on this. So, here's a few different versions. Here's not what I want you to be doing. Uh, this guy, uh, Sexy Sax Man Flores, has had nearly 23 million hits on this YouTube video of going around tormenting people, playing... Oh, sorry, turn the... It's probably the best way to watch it. Now, if I get videos of people in um, Belfast, Norwich, Bristol, Germany, Luxembourg doing this, I ain't going to be happy. I don't think any of you are that mad. Anyway, here is a version of them playing it live in 1984. But notice here, well, I'll tell you, he playing, he's playing it in E minor. He's playing it in the original recorded key. But listen, he doesn't play the glissando. Now, I'm pretty certain he's playing on like a, a late six, maybe. It's definitely a Dukov mouthpiece. Um, it could even be a Yamaha horn. But he doesn't put the glissando in the start. He just jumps up that major seven. Just listen, it's coming up in a moment.
Move it on a little bit. There. But yeah, it was no big long run. Because it's very, very difficult to do that in the original key. Now, here is uh, George Michael doing it in London a few years ago. Um, listen. It's in a lower key still. They're now playing it in C minor concert. D minor on the tenor. Now, that might have been the request of the saxophone player, but I, it could well be. I mean, I, when I've done a few tours, like when I was going around with Yaz, um, she would sing songs in different keys each night, depending on how her voice was feeling. So it's quite possible George Michael decided to do it in this key, but they've actually got it here in this key here. So what I want you to do with it, well, what I want you to do is look at it in the different keys. Let's just look at it through the harmony. You've got here um, an E minor uh, 7, uh, G, B, E, and top F sharp. Well, E minor 9, really. There's no 7th in there. And then here you've got um, a C, 9, C, E, G, and the D. And then here is a good old plain C major 7 chord. Okay. Now, this is the interesting bit I want you to look at. Here you've got a B Phrygian mode. Okay. B to B in the key, well, the scale effectively of G major, or it's the run on the dominant note from B to B there. Okay, so alto players, you've got it in a much simpler key, but just get playing, get playing those sevenths. If you're finding it difficult to do, run these little sections here, ya da da dum, and then da da doo doo, and then the major seventh chord there. But listen out for that Phrygian mode. It's a really distinctive sound, a really distinctive scale. Make sure you get the, I'll put a link in to download it from iTunes, but there's loads of things on YouTube there. There are a few backing tracks knocking around in certain books, but any questions, comments, or anything else, or um, jibing me for teaching you George Michael, um, let me know. But what I really want you to be able to do is understand, be able to play this most distinctive solo um, from the last 30 years. So happy hunting. <laughs>